Lies of P is one of the best Souls likes I've ever played. And I actually feel terrible for admitting this, considering that they stole absolutely everything from other games. Just think about it. Sekiro's prosthetic arm as well as parry mechanic, Bloodborne aesthetic resemblance, the Firekeeper alternative for leveling, bosses that strangely remind some other bosses, inventory management, weapon upgrade system and materials, NPC interactions and quest lines. What can I say, even those annoying frogs that stack instant death on you were recreated in Lies of P. The game literally plays and feels like yet another FromSoft product, which made me wonder how the studio hasn't even received any copyright violations. And yet, they managed to combine old mechanics with their own ideas so incredibly well, that this game definitely deserves its place among the best games of the genre. In this video I would like to share my impressions about Lies of P and discuss the things that in my opinion the game did really well. One of the distinctive features I feel in most other Souls-like games is their obscure storytelling. While I acknowledge the mysterious charm it gives, usually I do feel the lack of overall understanding on how things are glued together, which basically shifts the focus of the game to simply beating challenging bosses. Sure, it is fun to have some lore expert on YouTube explain everything to you after you beat the game, but the problem I feel is that you don't have that full immersion while actually playing. Lies of P on the contrary offers a much more transparent storytelling. And don't get me wrong, I don't think it makes the game boring or too straightforward. The plot is still full of mysteries and unexpected twists, but the way it unveils in the game is much easier to follow. You actually understand how the world develops and what impact your actions have. As a result, it makes you feel like an important, essential part of the story. You are a puppet of Geppetto. Unlike yet another Ashen One or yet another Hunter, you are unique special. Trying to figure out your own purpose in the story, bit by bit you explore the secrets of the city of Krat, consequences of the petrification disease, origin of souls alternative known as Ergo, role of the workshop union, the alchemists and the stalkers, reasons behind the puppet frenzy and existence of monsters. The game lets you feel your character's progression and development like no other souls game does. And a huge role in it plays the concept of lying. I would probably agree that developers could squeeze even more out of it, for example making it more significant for side quests, but I still think it is integrated very organically, allowing you to feel your character's growth. On the contrary to other Souls games I've played, I found myself extremely invested in this particular story, actually anticipating each upcoming chapter to see what's coming next. To avoid spoilers to any potential viewers who haven't played yet, I would not go into much details. But trust me, the story is absolutely magnificent. Second point I have to cover about what Lies of P does really well is how it incentivizes the player to be creative. I would like to focus on Legion arms, weapon assembly system and character respec. The way I used to play other Souls games was mostly boring physical builds. Beating whole game with just default sword upgraded to maximum? Sure, let's go. The most my creativity would peak at was something like switching from strength strength weapon to agility weapon when I was tired from the former one. Yeah, you might object that there is also a lot of magic present in games like Dark Souls, yet I never really felt any incentive to use it, and the prerequisites to using it usually felt quite confusing to me. Lies of P solves this creativity problem by introducing Legion arms and weapon assembly system. However, talking about Legion arms, it would be more fair to say reintroducing, as this mechanic is a clearly borrowed concept from Sekiro. But on the contrary to Sekiro, I ended up using Legion arm much more in Lies of P. In my opinion, they managed to integrate it really well into the game, making it an essential part of your arsenal. In short, progressing through the game, you would unlock different Legion arms you can use. There is a total of 6 arms to choose from. Each arm offers its unique looks, damage type and stat scaling. Some might even help with defense. The resource you spend to use the arm is Legion Caliber. Legion arms can help to inflict the status effect that your enemy is weak to, shorten the distance between you or even stagger the enemy. Quite simple yet very effective. And despite the fact that some Legion arms prove to be more effective against specific types of enemies, in my opinion they are quite interchangeable and it's essentially up to a player to decide which one fits their playstyle the most. I had a lot of fun using those and I believe it brings a lot of diversity to combat encounters. Let's move on to the weapon assembly system. I'm glad to raise this point as something completely unique the developers have introduced in the game. Majority of weapons in the game consist of two parts, a blade and a handle. Blade affects a weapon base damage and the damage type, slash, pierce or blunt. Handle affects weapon moveset and stat scaling. Both the handle and the blade also have their unique fable arts. The beauty of this comes from the ability to assemble a weapon with any blade-handle combination. It opens space for infinite creativity playing with different weapon movesets and combinations of fable arts. Now, what are the fable arts exactly? 
While we can roughly parallel Legion arms with magic spells from other games, Fable Arts is something new Lies of P brings to the table. Basically, it is a powerful special skill your weapon has that requires Fable slots to be executed, and these Fable slots are charged hitting enemies or using Fable catalysts. Some Fable Arts provide buffs to your character, helping to parry complicated attacks, increasing damage of your next hit, providing elemental damage to the weapon, boosting stamina recovery and many many others. However, the majority of Fable Arts are offensive. All weapons have two Fable Arts, one from the blade and one from the handle, and the weapon assembly system allows you to play with different combinations of these two. A classic yet very good example of this would be a police bat handle plus range blade. This allows you to deliver colossal amount of damage in a single hit. Or you could figure out something that works specifically for you. With a good combination of blade and handle you can achieve desired length and weight of the weapon, which would also affect damage, attack speed and inflicted status effect. Very cool feature if you ask me. My final point that empowers the upper two and incentivizes players to be creative is respect system. On the contrary to other games, respect system in Lies of P is introduced quite early in the game, does not require any rare or unique materials and is not punishing at all, allowing you to jump into different builds with no fear. I understand why some people might find it boring, as respecting is usually a very scarce resource. However, for a casual gamer like me, this less strict approach in Lies of P was quite rewarding and allowed me to try a variety of different builds. Another interesting addition they introduced in the game is P-Organ upgrades. In addition to the original stats upgrade system present in all souls like Slice of P introduced a solid skill tree with various active and passive bonuses. It consists of nodes and each node has various benefits, such as strengthening the pool cell, which is a local Estus alternative, expanding fable slots, increasing enemy stagger duration and many many more. While these upgrades do not change anything fundamentally, they do enhance your combat effectiveness and allow for additional customization of your playstyle. Speaking about the combat side, I really enjoyed how Lies of P implemented a combination of Sekiro's parry mechanic and traditional dodging mechanic, while also spicing things up with some alternative of Bloodborne health regain. In the game, the player can protect themselves from enemy attacks by guarding with their weapon. This action will consume stamina but reduce received damage. This reduced damage will be transferred to guard regain, which can be converted to health hitting enemies back. If timed parry correctly, it will perform a perfect guard. This will totally block incoming damage, increase enemy stagger meter or potentially even break their weapon. Weapon durability overall is done pretty well in the game. Your weapon can be broken too, so you must constantly keep track of its condition and repair it mid-fight if needed. I have to say that perfect parry in the game is far from easy. While I found myself leaning more towards dodging than parry, the game still brings you out of the comfort zone and incentivizes using both mechanics almost equally. Majority of strong enemies and bosses would have a so-called red attack, which means it cannot be dodged. In my opinion, this adds a good dynamic element to the game and makes fights less repetitive and very spectacular. Another aspect of the game that I found spectacular is its visual design. Lies of P handled that gloomy steampunk environment incredibly well. Areas, buildings, costumes, basically everything around strangely resembles Bloodborne, and considering how much stuff the developers have recreated from other games, there is no doubt they took design inspiration from this one. And who am I to complain? Quite the opposite. I was literally craving for some game to be released that would at least aesthetically resemble the 2015 masterpiece. Except for general aesthetics, I think the visual effects also look great and on point, not to mention amazing weapon movesets and how they feel overall. The next category where I feel Lies of P really stands out is so-called quality of life improvements. These are not some fundamental gameplay mechanics, but rather things that make the game much more enjoyable. For example, quest hints on Stargazer. I personally found quest progression in From Software games quite confusing, so having these simple hints really makes a huge difference staying on track. The ability to assemble weapons, switching grinding stones and legion are and level up on Stargazer is also very comfortable. It might indeed reduce the value of the NPCs responsible for this, but I still think it's a good feature to have. Another one is a backyard, where the player can test different weapons, legion arms and practice parry without spending too much time going to some lower level area to do this. When staggering enemies in other games, you definitely had situations when you failed to deliver a crashing blow just because it was unclear from which side to approach the enemy. In Lies of P, these areas are highlighted, so you always know where to stand. To add up to this, the whole stagger mechanic by itself in the game feels quite fresh. When hitting the enemy, at some point they will have their HP bar highlighted, which means the player needs to deliver a charged strong attack in order to stagger them. Finally, one of my favorite things about the game that hasn't been mentioned yet is how defensive parts are separate from 
the costumes. It allows you to be as drippy as you want and still have whatever defenses you need for your build. I'm sure there might be a lot of criticism to my previous points covered in this video, but I would like to finish with the one no one will argue with. The music in this game is absolutely incredible. While different area music and boss fight OSTs already hit hard, the records you find throughout the game are just something else. I even have to spoil it here a little. Listening to those records increases your character humanity, but I actually felt like my personal humanity was increasing as well. If you are yet to experience the game or planning to do it again, definitely make sure to play some of those while exploring the hotel. And my personal favorite is definitely Quixotic. Do let me know which record is your favorite in the comments below. Wrapping things up, I don't want to claim that Lies of P is the best Souls-like ever made. The game definitely has its pros and cons. The points I personally found as improvements some might interpret as unnecessary simplification. To some, the world design and storytelling might seem just too linear and not as intricate as let's say in Bloodborne, or the amount of copied mechanics might seem just too unethical. But for me, this game delivered an incredibly refreshing and unforgettable experience. Lies of P revisited classic souls like pillars and spice them up with its own ideas. It gave me a good challenge, a good story and an amazing aftertaste.